Hello everyone, it's Jess Hearts, and today we are building the Home Alone house. Funnily enough, right before I even started YouTube, I built this house way before the configurable stairs came about. So it was very tricky. I had to mess around with the flooring and fake walls. I believe Kate Emerald has an old video showing how you can do staircases like that, but obviously it's not needed now. All we need is spiral staircases, am I right? Like damn, how long has The Sims 4 been kicking and they have no spiral staircases? <laughs> anyway, I know it's after Christmas and this is a Christmas movie build. Do I care? No, I want to make this dang video. So let's jump right into it. This is Kevin McAllister. He's eight years old and he lives with his five siblings and his parents, Peter and Kate. I mainly know Kate from Beetlejuice. Oh, we should build that house. Too early for Halloween, but late for Christmas. True Jess style. <laughs> a few households are like an insanity in fair Chicago where we lay our scene. Everyone's at Kevin's house. Kids are screaming and parents are packing and also screaming, but a police officer is trying to get anyone's attention at the front door. I believe Kevin still sleeps in his parents' bed and is kind of a pain in the ass, but he is also bullied a bit by his older siblings. He has no idea how to pack a suitcase because his mother has always done everything for him. So he proceeds to ask everyone how to do it. But finally, the dad ends up talking to the officer and explains how all is well in the mechanic Callister house and that they have automatic locks and timers for their lights. Also, funny little side note here, there's a community page for my town and someone shared a photo of the two burglars from this movie the night before Christmas saying, watch out, these guys are burglaring people. Burglaring? Is burglaring a word? <laughs> Everyone got it, but one old lady didn't, and I think it freaked her out a bit how everyone else was laughing. <laughs> it was funny. Kevin runs into the kitchen looking for his plain cheese pizza, but gets into an argument with Buzz, his older brother and horn dog, because he ate it all in record time. Pretty commendable since it had only been a few minutes. Kevin gets up and pile drives Buzz, and that results in soda being poured all over the tickets and passports, which in turn loses Kevin his assigned ticket by accident. And wham bam, thank you ma'am, his mum sends Kevin to the attic. He wished he didn't have a family. Whilst everyone is off in dreamland, a power line is damaged and the alarm clocks have all been reset. In turn, everyone oversleeps and it's fluffing pandemonium in the morning. And of course, they mistake some other random kid during the head count and Kevin is ditched while they all climb into the taxi vans. <laughs> Kevin wakes up and sees that no one is around and I also just realised I stopped the right side of the kitchen up, so I'm a fix that. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, it cuts to his parents chilling on the plane and Kate, his mother, has a feeling they have forgotten something. Whilst this is happening, Kevin is wandering around the house, trying to find everyone. This is when we see the furnace downstairs and it scares the living crap out of Kevin. He runs outside and sees the cars are still there, thinking, wow, they just disappeared. He sits down and realizes he wished them to disappear. So of course, he's super happy. He runs around the house overjoyed and goes through Buzz's stuff and finds his firecrackers. He ends up playing with Buzz's BB gun and just has the time of his life really. This is where we see the classic scene of him watching an old movie where a man gets shot. A lot. Kevin flips out and yells for his mum. And that's when we see Kate on the plane and she realises, oh crap, I left my son at home. But Kevin's still having the time of his life. Tobogganing down the staircase and into the front yard. But later that night in Chicago, we see the fake police officer and his dim-witted partner sitting in a fake plumbing van. They know who's in the street and who isn't and how every house works. They are plotting to burgle every single house. Meanwhile, Kevin is sleeping whilst the Grinch is playing on the TV. As the burglars rock up, he awakes. He overhears them and runs down to the basement to turn on the light to spook them. Smart move, actually. When the family rocks up to the Paris airport, they try to call everyone they know and try to help Kevin to no avail. Then they end up trying to book another flight home, but all the flights are booked out for another two days. Kevin has a random burst of courage after hiding under his parents' bed and runs outside yelling. He's not afraid anymore only to be met with old man Marley. Buzz told Kevin that Marley murdered his own family in the 50s. So Kevin poops his pants and runs away. Poor Marley. Back in Paris the mum is calling the police and they are honestly useless as tits on a bull and no one else is answering their phones. The police rock up to the house and of course Kevin is too scared to go downstairs. 
The family goes over to the uncle's apartment in Paris and the mum being a trooper waits at the airport just in case a seat opens up. Kevin is once again all G, talking to himself in the mirror and feeling proud about how he had a shower and he washed his belly button. This scene feels like a spoof on the scene from American Psycho where Patrick is getting ready in the morning. Does anybody see that? Kevin then claps on some aftershave onto his face and regrets it instantly. I'm in good shape. Kevin leaves the house to go on a shopping spree and it cuts to the burglars making a mess at the Murphy's house. The answering machine picks up the dad calling them frantically from Paris. So they end up hearing about how they are definitely in Paris. So what the hell? What was that light in the basement? Whilst Kevin is trying to buy a toothbrush, he gets spooked by old man Marley and runs off with the toothbrush without paying. Kevin outruns a nearby police officer and as he's running home, he nearly gets hit by the burglar's man after they're leaving the Murphy's house. Kevin notices the gold tooth that one of the men has and remembers how he saw the police officer at the beginning and he had a gold tooth. I mean, it's been like two days, so surely you just recognize his face in general? I don't know. Kids, man. Kevin gets a little bit spooked by this and starts walking away, but is slowly followed by the van and it's pretty dumb. He ends up running and hiding in a decorative piece of Jesus' of birth with the wise men outside the church. The burglars keep on driving, none the wiser. And this is when it gets real. Kevin rigs up a whole setup, making it look like people are dancing and partying in the house with a mannequin and a life-size cutout of a basketball player. All the lights are on and it looks like she's pumping. The burglars drive by and see the commotion and decide to leave. Not gonna lie, it's pretty cool. Who else watched this as a kid and wanted it to happen and actually planned out what they would do? I did, but I'm pretty weird. <laughs> it cuts to the family minus the mother at the uncle's house in Paris. The dad is trying to speak French to someone on the phone and I believe Kevin's sister starts talking to Buzz about how she's worried and how he should be too. Buzz is adamant that they live on the most boring street ever and there's nothing to stress about. He really doesn't like him. Next minute, the pizza guy arrives at Kevin's and he tries to get Kevin to pay. Smart Alec Kevin starts playing the movie at the beginning. The pizza guy asks for his money and Kevin still messes with the guy with the movie. Kevin slips the money through the doggy flap and we hear the beautiful line again, keep the change you filthy animal. The pizza guy is pissed but Kevin turns the movie on again and the guy starts shooting. The pizza guy flips out and falls over the bin then runs back to his car. Kevin finally got his cheese pizza. Man, I wish it was my cheat day. I want to eat a pizza so bad right now. Anyway, the mum, once again being a trooper, tries selling her wares at the airport to swap for a seat. Poor lady, man. I hate how she forgot her kid, but I admire her dedication to get back. And yeah, she succeeds. She ends up in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Wait a minute. Is that the same Scranton as in The Office, the TV show Scranton Paper Mill. <laughs> anyway, Kevin is home in his parents' bed and it's apparent he's missing his family. He feels bad that he was a pain in the butt and promises he won't ever be again. He kisses a family portrait and falls to sleep with the TV on. The next morning, he starts his morning routine again and is singing into his comb. Of course, it's followed by the mandatory aftershave and scream. <coughs> Oh yeah, he kind of trashed Buzz's room as well looking for the firecrackers and uh, Buzz's tarantula got out, so that's a thing. Kevin's gone shopping once again and rocks up to the register where an inquisitive young woman serves him. You can see how much he's growing up too, it's really adorable. He goes to pay and the woman asks if he's all alone. Kevin once again being a smarty pants says he's eight, of course he's not alone. She interrogates him a little bit but he's quick on his feet and he gets away with murder. Or the groceries, I should say. As he gets home, he's doing the laundry and pulling out all the dried clothes from the dryer. The furnace starts to scare him. He just tells it to shut up. Oh, little Kevy is growing up. The burglars notice how quiet the house is during the day and ambush the house while Kevin is now washing the dishes. Kevin turns on the TV again and it spooks the dim-witted burglar. He thinks he's overhearing a deal. Kevin places a pot in front of the doggy door and grabs the firecrackers. As the guy in the movie is about to shoot, Kevin lights the firecrackers and places them in the pan. They go off and the burglar freaks out and takes off. He also falls over the bin and then he 
gets back in the van and starts freaking out about someone's getting shot. Someone's been blown away. He mentions one of the names of the men in the movie, Snakes, and the other burglar thinks they should just stay put and check who it was just in case. It cuts to the mother on Christmas Eve trying to find another plane to Chicago, but to no avail. But thankfully, a singing troupe of middle-aged men offer to give her a lift. After the mother flips her lid at the attendant, of course. Also, the lead of the singing troupe kind of seems like a nice version of Peter out of Family Guy, minus the glasses. Seems like something important to add. But Kevin's getting real back at home. As he's decorating the Christmas tree, he sees one of the burglar's faces in the reflection of the baubles. Thinking on the fly, he calls to his parents, but the burglars are getting smarter and they know he's home alone. Roll credits. They decide they are gonna come back that night and Kevin hears them saying they're gonna be there at 9 p.m. Kevin later on that night tries to visit Santa's cottage that's set up down the road. As Santa is about to get into his car, Kevin asks for his family back. No presents, just his family. Even his uncle Frank. Why did Santa see no issue with this? Anyway, he gives them some Tic Tacs, product placement at its finest, and Kevin waddles off to church. He sits in the pew and old man Marley comes over to him and says, Merry Christmas, as the choir sings Christmas hymns. Marley sits next to Kevin and tells him about how his granddaughter is singing in the choir. He tells Kevin that he doesn't need to be afraid of him and that he can say hello, that there's rumours about him but none of them are true. He asks Kevin, has he been a good kid this year? Kevin kind of says no and Marley tells him that the church is the best place to be if you're feeling bad about yourself. Old man Marley reveals why he's there after they talk a bit about how difficult families can be. He comes to hear his granddaughter sing. He's not actually welcome at his son's house. They got into an argument way before the McAllisters moved in and they haven't spoken since. Kevin tells Marley that he was afraid of the basement, but after making himself go down there and face his fears, he realised it's not so bad, and that Marley should face his fear of rejection from his son and talk to him. Kevin and him shake hands, and Kevin makes his way home. Here comes Kevin with his master plan to defend the house. He lays down his toy cars under the rug, splashes water on top of the outside steps to let them freeze, glugs on tar on top of the basement stairs, heats up the front door handle and rigs up a zip line from the attic window to the treehouse, along with several other painful things. He microwaves his mac and cheese and sits down at the dining table after saying grace, but as the clock strikes nine, it all begins. It's showtime. Kevin gets into position with his brother's BB gun and waits by the back door. The burglars knock on the door and tell him that they know he's all alone. Kevin pokes the BB gun out the doggy flap and nails one of the burglars in the thigh. <laughs> if you think that doesn't hurt, go watch Steve-O take those pellets in the booty cheeks. Nah fam, not fun. The dim-witted burglar pokes his head through the doggy flap and is met with the barrel of the BB gun. Hello. <laughs> Headshot. They decide to split up. Dumb idea. One of the burglars tries to climb the front yard stairs but slips and lands straight on his back. Fatality. The dim-witted one does the same but slides down the concrete stairs to the basement door. He tries to stand up but keeps falling over and I always laugh at that part. Pretty much they just keep struggling for a while but Merv- Oh Merv! Yeah! Oh, the dim-witted. Why haven't been calling them by their names? Damn it. <sighs> he calmly opens the basement door and walks inside. He slowly walks through the basement and tries turning on the light. It's not actually a light. It's a cord that goes up to the laundry chute, which is attached to a hot iron, which whacks him straight in the face. Kid's not playing around, man. Harry, the other burglar at the front, the smarter of the two, finally manages to get to the front door, only to melt his hand on the doorknob and he falls right down the stairs again. But it cuts to poor old Marv climbing up the tarred stairs inside the basement. Only he's lost his shoes. He really messes up his feet, actually. It makes me cringe. Oh yeah, and he steps right onto a nail and falls down the stairs again. Ugh. Good old Harry starts going for the backyard kitchen door, and this happened. <laughs> Not gonna lie, when I was writing the script and watching the movie, I near peed myself at that part. He then dives headfirst into the snow with a new found haircut. Angry as hell, Harry runs through the door and yells, Where are you, you little creep? Marv, after escaping the basement, tries going through the living room window by the Christmas tree. 
only to land on a bunch of glass baubles. I can't, man. I can't deal with this feet stuff. Harry walks into the dining room and Kevin pretends like he's scared. But in reality, he's got a fan rigged up with feathers right in front of it, ready to bamboozle Harry. Cling film covered with glue slaps onto Harry's face as he runs through the door. The fan turns on and now he's a bona fide chicken. Well done. Harry, all feathered up and partially bald, meets Marv, all cut up and ironed in the entrance of the house. They hear the kid at the top of the stairs, and as they begin to climb, Kevin lets the roped up cans of paint swing. Harry ducks and it takes out Marv. 50 points. Harry starts climbing again, but gets whacked in the head and lands on Marv. 60 points. We have a winner. Marv notices how Harry is missing his fabulous gold tooth, so, you know, now he's 10 times more pissed. Harry climbs the stairs with Marvin's suit. They trip over a wire, but Marv manages to get a hold of Kevin's foot as he's trying to climb the attic stairs. But oh look, it's Buzz's tarantula, just in time for Kevin to plop it on Marv's face. Marv flips his lid and the spider lands on Harry's stomach. Marv, being really, really smart, goes to whack the spider on Harry's stomach, but ends up just hitting Harry. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kevin is about to glide over to his treehouse via the zipline to make his escape. When he reaches the treehouse, Marv and Harry make it to the window of the attic. For some reason, they think it's a smart idea to climb over on the rope, and duh, Kevin cuts the rope and they both swing into the bricked wall of the house. Absolutely yoked. Do they give this kid a medal of bravery? Because they should, but he should probably call the police. Anyway, Kevin runs to the neighbor's house. Lo and behold, that house has already been burgled, so they know their way around. As Kevin opens a basement door to the kitchen, they are already waiting. Pretty much, they scruff him like Australia's ex-prime minister only wishes he could scruff Putin. But in comes old man Marley to finish his ring of serial kills and wax them both on the head with a shovel. He grabs Kevin and it cuts to Marv and Harry being put in the police car whilst Kevin smiles and waves safe in his house. Kevin sets out some cookies and milk, also carrots, for Santa and his reindeer, whilst the mother is in the truck with the singing troupe having a heart to heart with the leader of the troupe about bad parenting. Pretty much the leader of the troupe just degrades all his fellow members saying how awful they are as parents to make this lady feel better. She still feels bad but then he reveals how he left his kid at a funeral parlor all day alone with a corpse but he was fine after six to seven weeks he started talking again so you know kids are resilient. Anyway Christmas morning yay! Oh yeah Kevin wished for his family back the night before so he's expecting them. Kevin runs downstairs and looks everywhere for his mum, but she's nowhere in sight. Kevin, defeated, wanders back inside just as the truck pulls up. He hears the door unlock and his mother yelling for him. She sees all the decorations he's put up and he runs down the stairs to her. They hug, it's cute, and say Merry Christmas. No big deal. Kevin asks where everyone else is, but as she starts to explain, they all arrive. Even Buzz thinks it's cool Kevin didn't burn down the house. Kevin explains how he went shopping and got the necessities, the laundry and all, and they're really impressed, but he doesn't mention the burglars or anything. But Kevin spies something out of the TV room window, whilst the father finds the golden tooth from Harry. Kevin sees old man Marley and his son's family all hugging, and it's super sweet, and just that part is the best part of the whole movie, I don't care what you say. Buzz finds his room absolutely trashed, and... That's it. That's the end of the movie. I hope you guys like that little story time and the house. I'm sorry it's a couple days late for Christmas, but you know how busy it can be during this time of year. Should we build the hotel from Home Alone 2 next year? I love that movie just because Tim Curry alone, and I will get it out on time hopefully. Don't mark my words. I probably won't. And by that time, Trump won't be president anymore, so we can make some jokes about how he's in that movie. <laughs> anyway guys i hope you all enjoyed this video and the house is up on the gallery under jess hearts but remember to subscribe like and comment tick that bell and i hope you all had a merry christmas and i'll see you next time you filthy animals bye